Yes. Mr. Chambers. Politician. Yes. Fianna Fáil. Yes. Long at it. I'm about six years at it now, more. I would have joined maybe six or seven years ago mm -hmm. and first ran in the 2011 elections. I was late entry to the ticket, so mm -hmm. it was a whirlwind campaign. And I suppose since that point then I worked towards the local elections last year. And now the general election for next year, I'm going to declare a candidate. So, so you've been very young when you went in first? I was 24 when I ran 24, in 2011, yeah. yeah. And even after that time I ran three internal party elections for party vice president. So I've been kind of on the road now for five years campaigning. So you're running for Fianna Fáil? I am, yes. Is that difficult? No, it no? been difficult. No, they've okay. been a really good organisation. And uh, what do you work at generally? I'm a barrister. You're a barrister? Yeah, so I practice in, in the Western Circuit. I work in Mayo and Galway. And you find there's a little bit of spillover then into kind of Sligo, mm. Roscommon as well. And how did you get involved in politics? Um, through the RDF, what used to be the old FCA. One of the sergeants in my unit uh, was a, the chairperson of the Cast of Arcoman. And a day, a few years ago, he asked me to come to a meeting. And mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I was going to, but mm -hmm. I said yes, because I don't I tend to grab opportunity. And I suppose, you know, I was interested to see what it was all about. So I went along to a meeting, and about a year and a half later, I was running in the general election. And was there any of uh, your family in politics prior to that? No, nobody. And what do you think of the state of the nation now? There's definitely improvements. I improvements, think we're, yeah. I think we're finding, um, certainly there's been massive improvements in the bigger oh, cities, so like Dublin and Cork and Limerick and Galway, but Mayo is still lagging behind. Mm -hmm. and I think we're finding we're a little bit at the back of the queue, so we just need to see that recovery come west. And I think that's what we're fighting for. Is there any chance you might get some of these multinationals to come down the west, or down the country even? I don't see why we can't. Um, yeah. If there's an appetite there to get them west, we can do it. We can create the environment, we can, can create favourable conditions that mean the west of Ireland is somewhere they want to come. Mm. But that takes appetite and willpower on the part of government to do that. Um, we've attracted multinationals in the past, like Hollister, Allegan, Baxter. There's no reason we can't do it again. And they're quite happy down here, I think. Very happy. But I mean, it's a fantastic place to live and it's a good place for staff. You have a good work-life balance. You have very nice towns and villages to live in. Um, great outdoor amenities. It's a good place to live. No long commutes. Well, that's it, you know. Yeah, so there's a lot to do there's here, There's a lot yeah. to offer. You know, we just need to create the environment for businesses to come here. What would you like to do most of all for the country? I'd like to see a country that values all of the citizens equally. That I think most people would agree that at this point in time, if you need certain things like a home, a roof over your head, you know, medical treatment, that it's those with the most money that get preferential treatment. And certainly, from my perspective, healthcare is a priority. It's not a luxury, it's a basic necessity that the state should provide. And it shouldn't be about how much money you have. So I would like to see a country that values all of the citizens equally and gives everybody an equal opportunity. I don't mean handing things out to people. Enough, but Do you think that's achievable? Absolutely. I think that if you have a country that values the citizens and you have a situation where if somebody's willing to work, they get that chance. Every well, child should have a chance to do to, to reach their potential. Well, communism tried that uh, equality and uh, no, communism, it treated everybody equally. And no, communism is a completely different thing. Um, there will always be people that have more money than others. I'm not talking about that, but there should be basic. Um, you should have access to healthcare, you should have access to good education. And if you're willing to work hard, you can succeed. That the opportunities are there for everybody. Well, do, you not, do we not have a certain amount of that when you can get as much money by not working as by working in this country? Well, that's the social welfare system which does need reform, but I'm talking about access to third level and apprenticeships where every child, regardless of their socioeconomic background, where they come from, how much money they have, that they have access to third level if they want to go. And that, I think, is one of the, that's one of the reasons we were able to weather the storm so well, because we lost a lot of young people abroad, a lot of my friends live abroad. But the one thing that they had going abroad that maybe other countries didn't have was a fantastic education in their back pocket. And that meant that they were well looked after, they could get good jobs elsewhere, and hopefully come back to Ireland when the time is right. So education is the key to, to everything, I think. Well, uh, education is, a free, is available to everybody to an extent. Especially if you're... become more expensive. If you look at education now in third level, third level fees have increased every year for the last four years, even though there was a promise prior to the 2011 election that they would not do that. On top of that, the grant system, you're getting less for your grant, it's been spread more thinly, and they're so late paying it that you're not getting when you should get it. So there is an element of, like, if you have two or three kids going to college, and you have to pay registration fees, uh, your deposit on your house, books, 
food accommodation, all of this stuff, it's a massive expense to go now. And it has become a lot more difficult to get a third level grant. For the most poor, poorer people you can get this. Especially if you have a Medicare, if you're in that bracket where you have a Medicare, you get all this free. No, well, it's not a hindrance. You don't get everything free. Yeah, but well, you get most of it free. No, that's yeah, not true yeah. either. Well, it touches was, no, yeah. No, that's definitely right. not. You must have it wrong. Yeah. So, you're looking forward to the election anyway? Really looking forward yeah. to it. Look, it's a fantastic yeah. opportunity, yeah. and I appreciate the opportunity that I have, and I certainly won't be complaining about it. I'm looking forward to it. I've been campaigning since August, out knocking on doors, meeting people, and it's been a really great response. And fantastic engagement. People are talking to me about the issues, about the things they would like to see tackled for Mayo what they would like to see their Mayo team in the layer and doing for the county. And it is about standing up for Mayo, standing up for the West, making sure that we're heard on the national stage and that we have the right team to do that. It's important to be a strong advocate for this county because there's no reason we should be treated any differently to any other county. We are as deserving of recovery as everywhere else. And that's the message that has to be back out of here. Hope you get there. You'll be able to do it, I'd say. Thanks well, for me. Certainly, it won't be for lack of trying.